Assalamu alaikum viewers. Welcome to the series of program organization and behavior. As you all know, in the last program, we discussed uh, the introduction about the subject organization and behavior. I'll quickly go through what else we discussed in the first uh, program. Uh, we also discussed what are the contributing uh, subjects towards organization behavior and we also discuss the opportunities and challenges in the organizational behavior model. In today's program, we are going to discuss the few things which will help you uh, be familiar with the ideas of what an individual's behaviors are, what are the key biographical characteristics, you'll be able to have the identification of what are the types of abilities. Further, we'll uh, also discuss how to shape the behavior of other and also distinguish between the four schedules of reinforcements. Uh, viewers, you'll also be able to clarify the role of punishment in learning, practice of self-management and how to exhibit effective discipline skills. We have with us our expert, Mr. Fawad Bashir and this very vigilant students of uh, MBA, that is Masters in Business Administration. Thank you all for being with us. Mm -hmm. Sir, uh, I'll ask you my first question that what are the common biographical characteristics of individuals in an organization? Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. As we all know that uh, uh, the very basic element of human personality is based upon certain traits which are like God gifted traits. These are also known as biographical characteristics of any human being. It includes like age, gender, their marital status, and again their height, their physical, uh, you can say, appearance, their voice quality, their uh, color of their eyes, color of their uh, hair, and so on. Basically, these are those characteristics of a human personality which cannot be changed they can be improved a bit, they can be uh, like changed if, if we say that uh, we want to change the hair color or certain other traits of human uh, appearance. These are possible things, but so far as uh, uh, complete replacement or di displacement of these traits are concerned, these are not possibilities. Mm -hmm. There are other factors which can be changed through like learning, observation and other elements as well, which we'll uh, discuss all obviously later on. Ji. Okay, uh, do you have any question related uh, sir, to this Sir, I have thing? a question uh, that what kind of abilities organizations often require <coughs> from its employees? Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, we'll define what ability is. Mm -hmm. It is basically an individual's capacity to perform the various tasks in a job. As we all know as a student of management science, that uh, uh, in an organization we are hired to perform certain duties, certain responsibilities, mm -hmm. certain tasks. And definitely we must have certain traits, certain abilities to perform those tasks. Ability generally is of two types. First is intellectual ability mm -hmm. and the other is physical ability. And these abilities are furthermore uh, include certain other abilities as well. Mm -hmm. Like if we define the intellectual ability of an individual, it is the capacity to do mental activities. Sir, I have a question here that do dimensions of intellectual ability vary from person to person? Yeah, basically there are three uh, <coughs> foundationary intellectual abilities, thinking ability, mm -hmm. reasoning and problem solving. Mm -hmm. Basically, and as we all know that uh, when we observe different human behaviors, everyone is different. Mm -hmm. Like thinking styles are different, mm -hmm. ability to uh, take up certain things simultaneously. Uh, all of us cannot take multiple things simultaneously. Exactly. So there is a, uh, you can say, limitation in our capacity of intellectual ability as well. Furthermore, there are certain other uh, uh, intelligence things related with this uh, sort of uh, ability. Intelligence is basically contains four subparts: cognitive part, mm -hmm. rationality part, okay. which we are using right now, mm -hmm. social part how to deal and interact with others intelligently. Mm -hmm. Emotional part. As we all know that uh, uh, being a human being, we have different emotions and when we deal with others, we exhibit these emotions as well. And the cultural part. Intelligence varies and dimensions of intelligence varies from culture to culture mm -hmm. as well. If we want to measure the uh, ability, intellectual ability of any individual, it has got certain uh, uh, elements or sub-elements, first of all the number aptitude. Mm -hmm. As we all know, 
that we uh, all of us are, no, uh, 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 are not good in mathematics. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am not at least good with <laughs> mathematics. Yeah, because it varies from person to person. Uh, a few of us are comfortable with arithmetic. We are very yes. quick in doing like arithmetic mm -hmm. uh, and uh, certain operation, arithmetical operations. Then comes the verbal comprehension. Mm -hmm. Verbal comprehension includes written comprehension as well and as well uh, the uh, verbal okay. side of it what we are talking mm -hmm. and uh, listening abilities as well. Then the perceptual speed, mm -hmm. the how quick we are in understanding the things and how quick we are in uh, understanding the changes in the environment. Right. Okay, The spatial mm -hmm. changes, the time change mm -hmm. and if the combination of color and other uh, right. combinations are changed, how quick we are in, in understanding those things. So it is the cognitive ability we can say? Uh, we can say <coughs> that, that uh, it is a very major component of your cognitive ability uh -huh. Okay, yes. because we are rationalizing the thing. Then comes the inductive and deductive reasoning. Induction is basically a series of logical and uh, uh, you can say the causes of anything, the reasoning side of it. Basically, we take things in a sequence and ultimately we decide that these things are leading towards something. something. And this is and, and induction. And that we decide on the basis of our own perception. Yeah, our okay. own perception, our intellectual ability our rather. Experience is ability. Uh, then the other uh, part is the deductive reasoning. Mm -hmm. Deductive reasoning is that uh, uh, it is the ability to use logic mm -hmm. and we assess the implication of an argument, okay. basically. As in, okay, whatever is going to happen or whatever mm -hmm. are the consequences of what, I, what we are What are the consequences of this particular thing on a certain outcomes, right. we can say that. Okay, then comes the spatial visualization. It comes out of like uh, the time and space combination. Mm -hmm. uh, when we visualize the environment, mm -hmm. we, uh, if we statically analyzing the mm -hmm. environment, we can say that the spatial configuration of the environment, it is the one thing. And if we are moving, definitely the spatial configuration will be changing along exactly. with the definitely. movement. Definitely. So this is uh, uh, the intellectual ability which is related with such sort of understanding. Mm -hmm. Then comes the memory. Mm -hmm. And very important thing, memory is basically retention and recalling the past events, past incidents. Mm -hmm. And if we uh, try to define human personality in a simplest manner, what I think is we are nothing. Mm -hmm but memories, memories what we like have learned so far, observed so far and memorized so far. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, you can say, uh, uh, try to understand the current scenario on the basis of our past perception. Past so these are the dimensions of like intellectual ability of an individual. <laughs> then second part, in certain job constructs, the physical ability matters a lot. Okay. And physical ability is the capacity of an individual to do tasks demanding stamina, dexterity, strength and similar characteristics. Okay. It has also got certain sub characteristics or traits as well. Major three components are there, strength factor, the second is flexibility factor and third is like other factors are there exactly. as well. Strength factor includes first of all dynamic strength. Mm -hmm. And dynamic strength is related with the degree of uh, flexibility, the degree of like repeated uh, force which we are exerting mm -hmm. against any external object. The trunk strength, the strength related with our abdominal and back oh, muscles. Okay. Definitely mm -hmm. in certain jobs, we have to move our trunk, mm -hmm. we have to pick certain things up and put somewhere else. Like labor work. La sort of a labor work. Okay. Then comes the static strength. Mm -hmm. Again, at times we have to uh, force the uh, object, we have to like hold it or we have to move it away from us. It is against the external objects. Then comes the explosive strength, like athletes. All right. You have to like uh, explode yourself simultaneously. If you are talking about 100 meter race, definitely you have to like uh, have a strength, explosive exactly. strength. You have to explode yourself. It's basically a display of explosive and kind of energy or strength. Yeah, sort of. Mm. Then comes the flexibility factors, mm -hmm. like uh, in case of gymnasts. In oh. gymnastics, you know that they can uh, rotate their bodies, exactly. they, they to have flexibility extent. to a maximum mm -hmm. extent, I would say, which we are not able enough. Uh, it is the extent flexibility and dynamic flexibility. Mm -hmm. Extent, to what extent you can like mold yourself, 
moves yourself and dynamic flexibility is related with that if uh, you have to like uh, show flexibility mm -hmm. as well as you have to show certain uh, motions as well okay. like i have given you the example of a uh, gymnast, uh, gymnast. Mm -hmm. then there are factors like body coordination <coughs> you know that we have to harmonize mm -hmm. our mental and physical abilities then we are able enough to perform certain tasks and if someone has like uh, 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 you can say lack someone lacks this ability we can say that uh, he or she is not able enough mm -hmm. we say he or she is insane we mm -hmm. say he or she is abnormal or whatever is not going in the right direction in the right direction then we need balance work the work and life the body and personal life. the life the mind as well and then we need stamina in certain cases Mm -hmm. Like in case of uh, athlete, if we are talking about marathon, mm -hmm. it is all mm -hmm. about stamina. Stand if exactly. we are talking about squash, it is all about stamina, it is all about strength, it is all about mental flexibility. Mental ability. Yeah, mental ability and coordination. Exactly. Okay. So, okay. Uh, we can say that these are the abilities which someone requires in doing a job. But inclination might be different. In certain jobs, the inclination might be towards the intellectual abilities more and in certain jobs it might be more tilted towards the physical ability. But it is a combination of both the things. It is the combination But of it both depends the upon the nature of exactly. the work, yeah, yeah, what kind of depends. ability is required. Very right. Very so right. I have a question. Sure. How ability of an individual does affect his or her job? Mm -hmm. uh, here I have uh, something to add on that in my perception the ability job fits basically where uh, it is dependent on the HR department, which is the human resource mm -hmm. department, that how right a human resource department personnel is being placed according to the abilities he has and to... The right person for the right job. Exactly, the right person for the very right job. Right. Is very it right, right, sir? Very right, yes. very right. As we have uh, recently discussed that two sort of abilities are there, intellectual as well as physical abilities. Mm -hmm. And definitely uh, the role of an organization, and especially the human resource department is that uh, we'll identify those traits, first of all, then we'll try to identify those individuals okay. who will be capable enough to uh, do that particular job. And uh, definitely those, uh, uh, those employees must possess those traits, mm -hmm. which will be like best fitted for that particular so job. Job description. Yeah, we can say that first of all, we will analyze the job, known as job analysis, and afterward, what is the description and what are the personal specifications. Specification. We know uh, that. Then it comes job satisfaction. Uh, it will come uh, later, but that, uh, if, if that person is performing the job well and the organization is satisfied, and it is an uh, interaction of both the things. Mm -hmm. We will discuss it a bit later. Okay. Sir, so how would you define learning and its importance in an individual's life? Okay, when we look upon our lives, we started off our life as an infant, we didn't know anything about the environment, but with the passage of time, our parents, our family, closest ones, our relatives, they tried to inculcate certain attitudes, certain okay. behaviors in our personalities. First of all, they gave us a name and we didn't know what is it all about, but when time and again we heard a voice, and uh, that was our name. Exactly. Then afterward, we were ta taught what to eat, how to eat, how to move, how to walk, and so on. And it is all about learning. learning. We learned certain behaviors. Mm -hmm. We learned certain attitudes through observation, through practice, and through like uh, uh, enforcement as well. Mm -hmm. Certain attitudes were enforced to us. Mm -hmm. Basically, it is a requirement. Uh, of like uh, social acceptance that there are certain behaviors which are not socially acceptable mm -hmm. and it is our family it is our parents teacher who will tell us that what to learn and what to de-learn mm -hmm. and we'll discuss it later at what is a process of learning but it is basically any relatively permanent change in behavior that occurs as a result of an experience, experience. Okay. okay or if uh, we uh, try to like uh, uh, group it into certain components learning first of all involves a change second component is it should be a relatively permanent change mm -hmm. and third component is generally it is required through experience uh -huh. and i think sir that amna has to ask a question related to learning sure sir how learning theories shapes the behavior of individual in an organization <coughs> okay as we have uh, already discussed in the uh, previous lecture 
that there are certain subjects which contributed towards the development of the subject of organizational behavior. Mm -hmm. And psychology, I think, is yeah. the major one. And psychology is one of them. And learning is also the work of psychology. Mm -hmm. There are a lot many learning theories, but uh, the commonly used and applied theories are three. The first of them is classical conditioning theory. In this theory, we can say that it is a type of conditioning in which an individual responds to some stimulus mm -hmm. that would not ordinarily produce such a response. Because we respond certain stimuli like hunger is a stimulus and we try to eat something, thirst is a stimulus and we try to drink something. And against that, in this theory, there was an experiment run by a Russian psychologist known as Pavlov. Mm -hmm. Pavlov presented food to a herd of dogs and uh, along with that he uh, observed that after presenting the food which was a stimulus the dog started salivation. The saliva was being produced in their mouths. After some time he along with presenting the meat or food, he rang the bell as well. And after a series of like repetitions, after some time, when the bell was rang, they got together and salivation was being produced in their mouths. Mm -hmm. Basically, uh, it is a condition which was attached with already existing stimulus. The food was an unconditional stimulus because whenever there would be a food, it would like lead us towards salivation then there was unconditional response that we will respond against that thing and we'll eat that mm -hmm. thing. And meat was unconditional stimulus okay. and the response was salivation. There was a conditional or conditioned stimulus that was the bell and against that there was a conditioned response that was salivation. Mm -hmm. But the thing is whenever we'll remove the food side of that overall process and we'll try to like get that response from only the bell, it would not be there. Mm -hmm. So we have to attach both the things, the condition and the stimulus and then afterward we can shape the behavior and we can learn out of this thing. The second theory is operant conditioning known as reward punishment theory mm -hmm. as well. Okay, A type of conditioning in which desired voluntary behavior leads to a reward or prevents a punishment. And we apply it to the children usually. Yeah, basically. Either we try to shape their behavior by like giving them certain incentives, rewards, or we try to avoid certain behaviors in them uh, through certain punishment or fear exactly. of punishment. Exactly. There's a concept of reinforcement as well. Mm -hmm. In first theory, we have to reinforce that condition time and again. In this theory, we have to reinforce reward or punishment time and again. There are two sort of reinforcements. Positive reinforcement, negative, 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 negative reinforcement. reinforcement. It is all, uh, normally confused with reward and punishment. That reward is positive and punishment is negative uh, reinforcement. It is not so. Positive reinforcement is used when we try to add or inculcate a behavior in someone or someone's personality. Mm -hmm. And negative reinforcement is used when we try to, to eliminate, avoid, eliminate, eliminate, exactly. eliminate something out of a personality. But in positive reinforcement, we can use reward or punishment. Mm -hmm. And in negative reinforcement, we can use reward or punishment as well. As to add a behavior, we will give him incentive or reward. And to subtract a behavior, we will give him reward if that person will like avoid that behavior. It okay. is other way around. Mm -hmm. Okay. So key co concepts are reflexive, unlearned behavior, conditioned, learned behavior. Mm -hmm. That is attached with reinforcement. The third theory is social learning theory, which we as a human beings use very frequently. People can learn through observation and direct experience. Here it has got four steps. First of all, the attention or attentional process mm -hmm. in which there is a center of attention. There is a person which we are going to follow in early uh, age. We try to follow the parents the elders and the relative, the closest one, the family. Well, the afterward, the in the mind of yeah, those might be the ideal one. Basically, uh, at each and every learning, mm -hmm. 
there is a concept of social acceptance. If there is a behavior which is socially acceptable, yeah, it is appreciated, we try to follow it. First of all, we'll be attentive towards that role model. Then retention process. That whatever is being exhibited or performed by that leader or by, by that, that uh, personality which we're going to follow, mm -hmm. we'll try to retain that mm -hmm. thing in our mind. Then comes the motor reproduction process. Then we try to reproduce that behavior in our personality after observation, after okay. like learning and afterward reinforcement process mm -hmm. and we have to reinforce like certain uh, uh, positive things so that that be, will, be, will be repeated time in and our, again. In our own personalities. In our own personalities. All right. All right. Uh, I think Alia you have to ask something. So uh, we have learned the uh, schedules of reinforcement and the positive and negative reinforcement then what is the impact of reinforcement on the behavior of employees and I'll add here that which is the most desirable reinforcement okay first of all uh, we use reinforcement in shaping the human behavior mm. towards the desired one exactly shaping behavior means systematically reinforcing each successive step that moves an individual closer to the desired response mm -hmm. That might be the positive one or negative one, that might be the reward or punishment, whatsoever it is, we'll decide it on the basic basis of that learning and context of that learning. Key elements, concepts are reinforcement is required to change the behavior, mm -hmm. first of all. All right. Then comes that rewards are more effective than others. Then we have to decide in what case which reward will like uh, give us the better results. The timing of reinforcement affects learning speed and performance. As Alia asked, will uh, move towards certain types of like uh, reinforcements as we know that change or learning is a time consuming process mm -hmm. in this context definitely we have to give a schedule of these reinforcement it has got different types one is continuous reinforcement definitely a desired behavior is reinforced each time it is demonstrated Right. As in case of certain uh, animals in circus, mm -hmm. uh, in case of dolphin, when dolphin exhibits that required behavior or acrobat, she is like gifted with Gift. a fish exactly. or food or something. Mm -hmm. the, and uh, the second is intermittent reinforcement. A desired behavior is reinforced often enough to make the behavior worth repeating, but not every time it is demonstrated. All right. You mean to say that every time the fish should not be given, but the dolphin uh, performs the way the leader asks? Uh, yeah, in, in certain cases. Okay. In certain cases, you might be like changing the uh, continuity of that All thing. Right. But it is like uh, uh, it decided, it is decided that when the continuous will be better mm -hmm. and when the, re, uh, the, the intermittent, intermittent will, be will be better, giving us the better results. Okay. Schedule of reinforcements are fixed. These might be variable. Fixed are basically that here we uh, like give the incentive or reward at uniform intervals, like okay. for after every week, mm -hmm. after like every hour or day, whatsoever the requirement is. And variable interval is based upon the achievement of that particular required That's behavior. Right. Like in case of a salesman, mm -hmm. we'll give him incentive like after every uh, sale level, like if he or she will sell like 10 units of that thing, then he or she will be rewarded. Mm -hmm. Time is not important here. The achievement of that particular outcome, outcome is, important, is here. important Sir, uh, there is a concept of uh, employee of the month in organizations these days. Does yeah, that have yeah, anything yeah, to yeah, do yeah, with yeah, interval? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay. Basically, uh, uh, for the whole month, you have uh, given them a competition, a competitive environment. They'll try to exhibit the positive behavior. And after the uh, month's time, they'll be rewarded mm -hmm. that thing. And everyone will be competing for it. And that is a positive reinforcement. Right. OK, uh, here we are uh, uh, also given certain uh, detail of a schedule of reinforcement, like continuous. In uh, this case, the reward are given at e uh, uh, at, at, uh, after each desired behavior. Then fixed interval, here interval is fixed, variable interval, here vi uh, the interval is not fixed. Achievement okay? is important. Achievement, Achievement might be Achievement more important. important. Fixed ratio means reward is given after fixed amount of the output. And variable ratio is that amount of achievement might be variating as well. Mm -hmm. Because do try to inculcate a behavior in human being, and human behavior is very complex. Exactly. So and it keeps to, changing it because keeps you change. cannot expect a yeah, person yeah. to always be up to date yeah. or up to the mark. And you cannot expect, as your question is, which one is the best, best one? Nothing is best. 
because it all depends on the type of the personality, personality. and that context of the learning right. that mm -hmm. uh, will decide that which uh, schedule of reinforcement will give us the better results. Means particular circumstance. Which yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Here, there is a, there are certain exhibits, and we can refer to the slides as well. In certain cases, which will be the better, better one. one? Okay. Next. Uh, I think uh, Abdurrahim, you would like to ask something? Yeah, sir. sir, how can we modify the uh, behavior of in, an employee or individual in, a, in an organization, sir? Okay, and yeah. does it help in increasing the efficiency of a certain employee? Yeah, definitely. First of all, as we have uh, discussed, that what learning is, is and uh, how we can shape up behavior. Mm -hmm. So we apply these theories in uh, organizational, uh, uh, you can say, behavior and we try to modify the uh, human behavior or the employee's behavior. And uh, there is a concept of organizational behavior modification known as OB mod. Mm -hmm. Here it is the application of reinforcement concepts to individuals in the work setting. Mm -hmm. And it has certain steps. First of all, we will identify which are the critical behaviors okay. which need to be modified mm -hmm. because these are directly related with the performance or outcome. Then we develop a baseline of that behavior. Baseline is that behavior uh, below which the behavior is not acceptable and above which it is acceptable behavior. Then we identify the behavioral consequences, the outcome of those behaviors and ultimately we will apply the intervention through reinforcement, through mm -hmm. learning theories mm -hmm. concept and afterward we will evaluate whether the required behavior okay. is being achieved or not. Oh, no, no. Okay. In uh, organizational behavior, as we know that uh, well pay versus sick pay. Sick pay is given when employee is sick and well pay when we, you are okay. But organizational behavior modification suggests they reduce absenteeism by rewarding attendance, not, not absence. absence. Okay? Right. We'll more concentrating upon the, uh, the uh, attendance side exactly. more. That is positive reinforcement. Then employer discipline to use of punishment can be counterproductive. Mm -hmm. So we will be more towards the like uh, positive, positive side. Uh, side of that thing or rewarding side of that thing. Developing training programs, mm -hmm. OB modification methods improve training effectiveness okay, mm -hmm. through certain exactly. reinforcement and self-management exactly. reduces the need for external management exactly. control. But definitely there must be an incentive, mm -hmm. there must be a positive reward for that uh, employee so that he or she will be moving towards the self-management. Plus, certain tips cannot, uh, can also be given for uh, okay. self-management. Yeah, very right, very right. Okay, uh, for further going into the detail of uh, the human behavior and its basis, attitude is that component which leads us towards like behaviors, which leads us towards like responding to the environment or situation. Attitude is basically evaluative statements right. or judgments concerning objects, people or events. Mm -hmm. As recently we have uh, uh, learned learning and uh, attitude is also a learned predisposition of some humans. It has three components. First of all, cognitive, rational side, mm -hmm. affective, the emotional side and cognitive, cognitive, side. cognitive or action side. These three components will form an attitude and basically uh, the job related attitudes which are more important in organizational, organizational behavior. behavior. The first is obviously. job involvement. Mm -hmm. The degree to which a person or employee is involved and feeling involved him or herself within the that organization or job construct. Then commitment mm -hmm. with the organization known as organizational commitment and a, yeah. a very important attitude. The degree to which an employee identifies with a particular organization and its goals and wishes to maintain membership in the organization. Mm -hmm known as a committed worker. Then cognitive dizziness is a concept. As which I think you'll want to learn very effectively, which yeah. is a key concept. Yes. It is a key concept. Basically, uh, whatever we usually do in our daily lives is like uh, for the sake of our overall satisfaction. Exactly. Whatever is done, whether we take mm -hmm. food, whether we take action or react against certain things. What is the source of dissatisfaction? The major source in psychology is known as cognitive dissonance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is like uh, originated when there is a clash between two attitudes or there is a clash 
between attitude and behavior. the behavior or outcome of that thing so this is the source of cognitive dissonance which will lead us towards that and we are also running short of time so sir you'll have to quickly wind it up okay so uh, when uh, in the next lecture we'll come towards the behavioral side and the relationship of the attitude with the behavior and motivation then we'll like take us it a bit further and uh, with this we come to the end of the today's program in the next program as sir has mentioned we'll study the relationship between both and in today's program we have studied learning behavioral modification and other certain elements which i mentioned at the start of the program as well thank you all again for being with us allah hafiz